Well, hello and welcome, Maverick Traders. It's Market Roundup time. Joe with you here coming out of the holiday. Hopefully you had a good Thanksgiving. It is the 28th of November. We are pushing into the last month of 2022. It's going to be pretty interesting to watch what happens. I've got my two cents on what I think is going to happen. Take it for what you will. Take responsibility for the outcome. Let's jump into some market analysis. We did have what's kind of referred to as a holiday rally. You can chalk it up to that. I don't I don't know if I want to go that far, but we did see the markets move pretty good over the three and a half days, right, of um, holiday trading. Now, today, they seem to pretty much give most of that back. Let's let's figure out, let, let's first of all address what we did today, down about 1.5% across the board. Dow, S&P, NASDAQ, all down about 1.5%. Russell's just over 2%. Oil and gold still trading, obviously, but didn't really move much. Oil up a little bit, gold down slightly. I think the biggest thing to focus on was the move lower after a holiday rally. Was this just the opportunity to take a little bit of the gains made through the last few days, or is this something more substantial? Personally, folks, I just go to the charts to make that decision, but let's continue through some of these events. New home sales were substantially higher. I did not follow a lot of stuff going on to Wednesday because I was getting ready for the holiday on Thursday. But I saw that new home sales number, and I had to triple check it because it was outrageously higher. And I'm not sure if this was just something that was a little bit late or delayed or if there's still a lot of cash home purchases going on, but that was a pretty good number. So I decided to dig a little deeper, followed along the Black Friday events. I didn't really go out and participate. I'm not sure if you guys went out there and, and, and went through the lines, all that stuff, but the consumer is absolutely... Still super, super active. So we've got a couple of numbers. Yeah, I don't want to base it all off just these two things that I saw over the last few days. However, the consumer is not slowing down at all. Jobs aren't falling. I'm not seeing this economy come down as far as being too hot. I still think we're up in the hot range. That's my opinion. Now, crypto worries. Obviously, I jumped on today, and you guys probably saw it as I did. We got another one that's chap uh, filed for Chapter 11. I don't know how it's tied into everything else. I'm not sure how deep this rabbit hole goes. goes. I am not a crypto e expert. I don't think a lot of people are. But uh, this could be something that's going to domino. I have no idea. But there's a couple things that we need to pay attention to. Advanced decline line, we had 78% uh, uh, declining. Once again, this could be just that pullback based off of a pretty optimistic holiday week. Um, above, below the 50-day moving average, still holding on to above. Yeah, 60-40. Well, well, yeah, 60-40, maybe even 70-30 if you want to be optimistic when it comes down to it. So let's just jump into the first chart here. This is the SPY. And you can see it looked really great over the last few days. But then today, eh, put it back into, uh, do I want to call it reality? Oh, I don't want to be too presumptive. But yes, we did have this beautiful ascending triangle pattern. Looked like we were about to butt heads and push higher, and it didn't. Doesn't mean that it can't. As a trader, I have to be at least 0 to plus 1 when it comes to this, as we have. Let's see if I can break this down and... Get my pin back a little bit faster because we do have a bullish crossover, bullish tilt on the 50. Flattening on the 20, that's fine. We do have a higher range here, but overall, folks, being above that 390 to me is definitely glass half full. You have to look at it that way. I mean, today's just one day to the downside. We, we can go all the way back down to the uh, 390 level as support. So we could have one or two more days to the downside as long as they're not too aggressive and still be in a optimistic or bullish trend. So I have to keep that in mind as I look to, to make trades moving forward. Now, what I was saying earlier, let's jump to the cues here, but what I was saying earlier about the, uh, the aggression in the consumer, that will relate directly to forward projections. I've got uh, the Qs. It's a little bit weaker, but boy, this is the strongest I've seen them. Instead of having a flat move across this resistance that we saw in the SPY, it's pulling back. But boy, it is still holding on to that 280. Now, it's a descending triangle. However, if you guys want to take a look at it in something different, it could be a flag pattern. The flag pattern means this thing could pull all the way back to its 20-day moving average here and break out as things get better. 
There you go. So I've just made the argument to be bull and bear at the same time. Let's get to the heat map. The heat map uh, today is just showing an absolute sell-off for sure. So my market outlook is going to be very difficult. We're above the 20, above the 50, above the, 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 uh, the 20, 50 slope is actually to the positive side. This is on the uh, spiders, by the way, folks. But I got to stick with a negative one or zero. I debated both. But based on the move today with knowing that the markets are back into full swing and what we saw in that new home sales number and a consumer that's not slowing down, also taking in light some of the crypto worries, some of the stuff that popped up to just today, yeah, I'm glass half empty. That's an opinion. That's what I love about this class. L monthly outlook? No idea. The reason being is because we are still within that channel. Yes, folks, I'm going to zoom in. We are still within this area. And unless we can get out of that area, I can't make one. I can't make a choice to the upside or the downside. The only thing I can do is continue to fall with these markets are giving us. We've got a hot consumer, and we've got some crypto worries. And boy, you can make the argument in either direction. I took a look at some of the trades that I had written down over the last couple of weeks. We did skip Wednesday. We had the holiday break, so I didn't get to chat with you guys. So let's get to Starbucks. Starbucks has this beautiful high base above 100 there. It doesn't seem to want to come down in light of today's move to the downside. It just stayed up in a pretty decent range. I mean, that's a lot higher than I would expect to see in a lot of different situations uh, when it comes to other stocks. So I just, I just think it's great. I love this little ascending triangle pattern here. You got to push pull over the last couple of trading days. It looks like this is going to base and maybe move higher. If you're not... If you're, too, if you're worried that it won't break higher, you can play something sideways to up and still benefit from it as well. AKRO, another one that's high basing. This one is just comfortably, I, well, not quite comfortably, but it is above the 45 level. If it can sustain that, this is something that I wouldn't be opposed to playing sideways to up. Calendar spreads, diagonal spreads, uh, things of that nature. Let's move to Visa. Visa is something that had a whole lot of, of volume and didn't really break down. I would not be opposed to give this another day or so. And the reason being is because I just want to make sure that this volume ends up going nowhere. Where the candle finished is optimistic because it is above that 210 level. However, I have seen way too many times these things gap down and continue lower because this volume finally pushed and broke whatever it was trying to get at. If this can sustain above the 210 level over the next day or so, you might want to look to play this as a breakout above the 215. I'd be totally comfortable there. But do, please, give this another day. Just because today's volume doesn't sit comfortably in my stomach, even though we did close above that 210 resistance. Just be cautious. There's no wrong. There's nothing wrong about being cautious, is there? No. This is Mosaic. This has been back and forth for a while. It's been in a sector that's been a little bit more tumultuous, depending on the expansion or contraction of what you expect the economy to do. But here we are in a symmetrical triangle pattern. I have it as sideways, so if you guys want to play this between the 54 and 48 level, be my guess. That's great. If you want to see if it's going to consolidate and break to the upside or the downside based on what you see the market's doing, go ahead. Uh, the choice is yours. Obviously, one something... You, the, the one side you're going to want to play sooner, which is the range bound, uh, or you might want to wait a little bit to see if these markets are going to break out or down. Moving on to the bears. This is CrowdStrike Holdings. Descending pattern, and it is holding great. I love it. I just like the fact that it's just staying below that between the 20 and the 50-day moving average here. Barely made the 20. Beautiful. I mean, this is picturesque. Decreasing volume to the upside as it comes down, increasing volume to the downside. Now, it has established a little bit of a pivot, but this could be more of a consolidation here and see if it can't bleed a little lower. For you guys that want to be aggressive, I'm fine being diagonally short from here, or you wait for this thing to break the, what do you want to call that, the 137, 136 mark, and uh, move towards the 120 to be a little bit more reserved. Amazon. It's got its own problems. Once again, this is opinion, but I do like the chart. Very similar to the previous one. We've got resistance areas here. It's starting to, to, to fall, broke support, comes back, barely retraces with a gap up to that 20-day moving average, consolidating right at a descending 20-day moving average. The volume was pretty high today, but it did have a pretty good 
Dragonfly, or I should say Gravestone Doji, excuse me, folks. So if you want to be cautious, see if it can't break that 90 first and threaten this area here. Um, or you, if you want to get into it now and play it slightly bearish, play it sideways. Sideways to down works as well. Last one I'm going to talk about, folks, is coin. This is because of, well, I don't know, the chart that we've had up for a while. It's been a pretty good bear. We had I had this thing range bound for so long. We talked about support, resistance, support, resistance, and it did stay there. It eventually broke down the beginning of November. Looks like it just retested here over the last couple of weeks. New, it is not participating in that bear. The the excuse me, the holiday rally that I saw. It is definitely news driven. This is specific to cryptocurrencies. Uh, if things get nasty and I should say muddy. Moving forward, I just don't see how this doesn't slide lower. That's right. That's my opinion. You're welcome. Have fun with those. So the markets pull back after a shortened holiday week. I don't know if we're going to get a Christmas rally. That was pretty interesting to see the markets go up the way they did over just that shortened holiday because it was only one day off and a half day on Friday. But we moved up pretty aggressively in light of some pretty aggressive inflationary numbers. The consumer's active. We still have jobs. Jobless claims are not increasing. We are con we are consuming. We're spending money. Black Friday was right in line showing that everybody's out there doing what they're supposed to do. So we'll see if that carries over. Crypto concerns continue to rise. It's going to be interesting to see what else follows suit. When a consumer is still active, new home sales pick up Let's, uh, or uptick. Let's see what happens moving forward. We do have um, some economic news coming up, I will be able to chat with you guys Wednesday. We'll talk about them then. Earnings reports winding down. I didn't see anything that really uh, raised my eyebrows, but just make sure you double check, triple check anything that you're going to trade moving forward. Talk to you next time. Bye, folks. Mm -hmm.